Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and it is the 21st of April, 2022. Glad to see everybody again. Uh, it's been about a month since I've uh, published a video, so I want to get into uh, publishing this video today for you, uh, so you don't think I've disappeared. But I uh, hope everybody's feeling well out there, so let's get started. Uh, what's on the cards today for the Linux Unix Tech Channel? Well, today I thought I would... Uh, take a look at and uh, do a system setup and product review of a distro of Linux that I have not reviewed before and that is AV Linux uh, but this time it's going to be AV Linux MX edition and MX21 Linux is a distro of Linux that I have reviewed earlier uh, but uh, AV Linux MX edition is built on the solid MX21 Linux which of course everybody knows is built on Debian uh, Linux as well and so Debian being a very stable distro of Linux. Um, so let's get into it. This uh, M AV Linux MX edition also sports the XFCE desktop which is a very lightweight desktop rather than the typical GNOME desktop that MX21 Linux uses. Uh, so let's uh, go out to the website first of all before we get started and um, Take a look at DistroWatch for AV Linux, and here it is. Uh, it uh, originates in Canada. Uh, it is based on MX Linux and Debian. But we're going to be looking at the AV Linux uh, MX edition. Uh, and it's uh, got pretty popular. It's 54 on the list, 217 hits uh, per day, not too bad. All right, so let's go out to the home page, and here it is. Let me click on this link, get out to the home page. And here it is. It is bandshed.net, AV Linux, uh, and this is the AV Linux MX edition right away, right in front of us here. And so, if I want to install this, what I did is, and you can do this as well. I'm going to go down here to the Bandshed Download Mirror and click on that. And what I did was I clicked on this link right here for AV Linux MX edition. And it is a 3.5 gigabyte ISO. All right, so it's uh, fairly beefy. Not too bad, though, and doesn't take very long to download on my system. But, of course, download times vary depending on your system. I've got a uh, Core i3 uh, system with 16 gigs of RAM, so it, it runs pretty fast. All right, so let's go out to my favorite hypervisor, which is uh, VirtualBox. And let me spin up a, uh, a VM of uh, AV Linux MX Edition. So let's go to Machine New, and I'll put in AV Linux MX Edition. And uh, it's based on um, Debian, 64-bit. And so let's click Next. And uh, I want to give this 4 gigs of RAM. So instead of the 1024, it's going to be 4096. And uh, so let's click Next. Uh, create a virtual hard drive, yes. So let's click uh, Create. And then it's a VDI virtual disk image. Click Next. Dynamically allocated, yes. I want to do a fixed size. So we're going to click Next there. Here I'm going to give this 32 gigs of RAM. Oh, not of RAM, but of uh, hard disk space. And so 32 gigs of uh, virtual hard disk space and create. All right, so it's ready to go. But let's go ahead and do the settings as we normally do prior to launching it. So let's do settings. And uh, as far as this information goes and the rest of the information across here, don't really need to touch anything there. Let's go to system. Let's uncheck the uh, or untick the floppy. Select the hard disk and move it up the boot order so that when we restart or reboot, uh, it will boot up into uh, the hard drive, not the uh, optical drive. Okay, so let's go down to display and let's give it the full 128 megabytes of uh, virtual memory and uh, video memory. And so the graphics controller, I'm going to change that away from VMS VGA to VBox VGA. Uh, storage, we'll come back to that later. And finally, network. 
I want to change it from NAT to bridged adapter so that I can touch the uh, VM if I want to from my local network. All right, so let's click OK here. And we're ready to launch it, so let's go ahead and click Start. And let's uh, select the folder here. And usually we hit, hit Add and Add it, but I've already done it before. So I'm going to select AV Linux uh, MX Edition. Choose that particular edition and click Start. And let's do a view full screen mode and switch. All right, so we're ready to go. Let's hit the Enter key on the keyboard and launch the, uh, the distro. Now there is a demo, yeah, there is a live edition of this, but I'm going to go straight into installing it on the hard drive uh, rather than uh, mess around with the demo version of this. Um, and so it is uh, a distro of Linux that does take a little while to come up, so just be patient. Always be patient when using Linux. Well, it usually works out better that way when you do that. And if you try to speed Linux up, sometimes you run into trouble. Okay, so it's developing now. And it should come up to a desktop with pretty uh, nice background uh, wallpaper. I really like it. Uh, and here is the uh, box that comes up. Here's the background we have. And if we wait a few seconds, this, the, this is the dock we have down here. If we wait a few seconds, there will be a conky that comes up over here. And uh, let's see if that develops for us. If not, we'll proceed. But I wanted to show you the conky. I think it's a really nice one. Uh, I haven't seen it before like this, uh, the way it was uh, designed. It's really great. So uh, being patient, as we normally have to be, let's wait and see if it comes up. And if not, we'll just proceed. And of course, it doesn't look like it's coming up for some reason, but that's okay. It will come up on the uh, on the install. Here it is. Okay, so here's the conky. Very detailed. It's got info, CPU, stats, weather. But I like the way the uh, this is the uh, sans serif font. It looks like uh, it almost looks like you hand wrote it. Thursday, April 21st, 2022, at 11:57. And so uh, let's go ahead and do a straight installed HDD. All right, so here's the installer. And uh, let's go ahead and click Next here. And it uh, lo is looking at the 32 gigabyte uh, VDI hard disk. Uh, I'm not going to make any changes here. This is just a VM, so we're going to use the 30 gigabyte root. Not going to encrypt it either. And I'm not going to customize the disk layout. I'm just going to let it go by default and do a default install. So let's click Next. And uh, so click OK to format the entire disk. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while it's formatting the hard disk, click Next here. Fill in this information. And so this is the MX, um, well, I'll call it AV MX Edition VM. All right. It's example. Dot DOM, I'm going to change that to example.com as the computer domain and leave the work group as the work group. Click Next. Uh, United States English is correct for me for the keyboard layout. Time zone, America, New York time zone is correct. I'm in the Eastern time zone here in the United States. I want the system clock to be uh, this one here, although I, I don't have a problem with military time. And let's click Next here. Uh, user login. I'm going to select my usual Data Pioneer. Default password. Put that in. And repeat it. Uh, looks like it matches. Want to uh, select Root here. Put in Root's password. And repeat that. Looks like it matches as well. No auto login. Do not want to save the live desktop changes because I'm not uh, in a live desktop. So let's click Next. And we have to wait now for this to complete. And so rather than have you wait, I will uh, go ahead and uh, stop the video, come back when it is completed.
Okay, I'm back, and uh, it took approximately 10 minutes for this process to complete. I didn't time it, but it's been about 10 minutes, so not too bad uh, for an installation. Uh, standard is about the 10 minute mark. Um, all right, it says automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. I'm going to go ahead and click finish, and let it close, let it reboot, which it's doing now, and uh, it should come up, and we can get in, log in, and I'll Take a look at AV Linux MX Edition. Please remove the disk uh, with the uh, installation media. I go ahead and hit the enter key. And it should boot up to the hard disk. Here we go. Now we can boot up into the regular boot up or system D. So let's go ahead and do system D. I like I like the system D there for services in Linux. And uh, hopefully we'll get 1920 by 1080. We do, and that's great. All right, so this is the login screen. I really like the background. I really like the lo login screen as well. And I do like the fact that AV Linux uh, MX Edition, I believe MX21 does the same. It doesn't just prompt you for a password. It asks you for the username and the password, which I like. So let me go ahead and put that in. Enter, and then password, put that in and hit the enter key and let it come up and settle down into the desktop which is an XFCE. We'll go immediately into HTOP here and take a look or we'll do a free and see what we're using for memory. Alright, the docker has come up. I like the dock that uh, they have chosen here for this distro and I really love the wallpaper. In fact, I'm not going to change it at all Okay, so here we got we got the uh, welcome to AV Linux MX Edition screen again. Um, other than reading the manual or installing the HDD, I'm just going to click Don't Show Again so that it doesn't come up and and bother us. We've got four new updates available, but I'm not going to update right now. Uh, here we go. We got the the Conkey came up right away, which is nice, and so it is now 12:10 on Thursday, April 21st. Um, and we've got our stats over here that we can take a look at. Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, click on the applications. And if we go to system, we should be able to uh, see the uh, terminal. And so there's the uh, XFCE terminal. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add that to the panel. Close that for a moment. And let's bring up the terminal. And let me ex Extend it to full screen and let me bump it up so you can see it. All right, I like the uh, the fact of the translucency here, so we can look at the wallpaper in the background. Very nice. All right, so let's do a sudo uh, apt. No, nope, sudo htop. There we go. So we're in htop now. I didn't really need to do a sudo for that, but I did, did it anyway. We're only using 443 megabytes out of uh, 4 gigs that I gave it, if you recall. Uh, this is what I gave it uh, when we started this uh, VM. That is not bad at all. 443 megs, that's very lightweight. Uh, of course, we're not running anything other than uh, the HTOP here and uh, some of the other desktop uh, background packages. All right, so the load average here is 0.22 or 0.20 for one minute, 0.22 for five minutes, and 0.09 for 15 minutes. Of course, we've only been up and running for three minutes and 14 seconds, so this is really the only one that applies right now. We'll have to take a look at these again after they're past their five minute, 15 minute mark if we're still there. But uh, it looks like we have 76 tasks, 93. Uh, threads one task running right now and the uh, CPU is very low not being utilized very much only 5% just bouncing up and down and of course we uh, have no swap all right so I'm going to go ahead and stop this process and uh, let's update the system now that we uh, are in the terminal uh, so let's do a sudo apt update and and sudo apt dash y uh, upgrade Hit enter 
and it should just be on its way to upgrade the system. The uh, AV Linux, of course, with MX Edition, uses the Aptitude Package Manager, as you saw. And so it doesn't take very long to update the system, and it should be updated when it comes out of it. It's at 98% uh, right now, and it's finalizing the process for updates. Once we get this updated, I'll take a look at the kernel version that we're using, uh, our disk space that we're being that we're using that from what was allocated, and then we'll move on to take a look at the applications on the desktop and other things on the desktop itself. Okay, I'm not sure what's being. Uh, updated right now, but it is taking a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but I'm being patient. Looks like it's the MX package installer itself that's being uh, uh, it's taking a while to get completed. It's being set up and it's processing now the triggers for the uh, man DB. All right, looks like it moved on now, and uh, and we're done. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and clear the screen, clean up the terminal, and let's uh, issue a uname R, take a look at the kernel version we're running. The kernel version is 5.16.0-18.1-Licorix-AMD64. Uh, uh, so we are using the Licorix kernel, which is, my understanding, is a very powerful kernel version. So we should be able to do uh, wonderful things here in AV Linux with uh, MX Edition. All right, uh, so we want to look at uh, the disk space being utilized right now, and we'll do a human readable on that. And it looks like uh, here on Dev SDA we are using, which is a 30 gigabyte, actually 32, but other things are being used. But we're using uh, 11 gigs out of that, so we've used 38%. We've got 18 gigs of available space, so we can install other packages as well. So I want to do is I want to install one of the, another package while I'm in here. I uh, wasn't going to do that, but I'll go ahead and do that now. Let me clean up the terminal, clear the screen, and so let me do a sudo uh, in, apt install glances. And if you're not familiar with glances, it's another tool like top and htop but it's a little more sophisticated so let me go ahead and put that in there yes I do want to continue and let uh, glances install and I'll show you a quick look at that and then we'll move on alright so let me uh, one more time clear the screen clean up the terminal type in glances and here's glances um, I like glances because it uh, unlike top h or htop uh, it does have the graphical, well, not quite the graphical appearance that HTOP does, but it does show you the CPU memory and swap, the user system and uh, I/O weight and you know CPU usage and idle and and that kind of stuff. It has a more extensive memory section over here uh, to show you your memory allocation. It does show you your network information, which is not shown in HTOP or uh, in TOP, and uh, gives you your default gateway, tells you what the uh, uh, latency is on that default gateway, 16 milliseconds here, so that's that's not bad, 16 one thousandths of a second. Um, then it shows you your disk I.O. as well, so it shows you your read speed, your write speed, uh, and then gets into the file system, the total amount used, total amount available here, uh, and so it's reporting 29.7 gigabytes of which we have used 10.5 gigs and then the other inf information over here is the same as you get in top and htop uh, pretty much okay so let me go ahead and get out of that and to get out of this hit Q just like you do in top and htop so let me go ahead and exit the terminal let's get back to the desktop and uh, you first thing you'll notice here in AV Linux MX Edition, there is no panel uh, on the side or at the top, although I 
pretty sure you can add one. Um, I like it the way it is. I don't. I'm not a big user of uh, or proponent, if you will, of uh, icons out on the desktop anymore. I don't like to use panels if they're not necessary. Uh, I like the fact that this has a dock, and uh, so I'll utilize the dock here. I do love the fact that it has a conky off to the right. So um, I mean that gives you your information right at a glance. You know, I've got something going on where my system becomes sluggish or whatever, I can look over here on the desktop and I can see immediately whether my RAM utilization or my uh, uh, CPU is being utilized to the max, that kind of thing, which would I could interpret rather as you know a reason for the uh, for the sluggishness or non-responsiveness, and and so that would uh, help me with my troubleshooting. So let's go ahead and click on, uh, actually you can right click on the desktop I believe, yeah, and uh, you can uh, in look at your applications right from here or you can come down and click this button which is your menu. So let's, let's go look at the menu. Um, you have to click left click to get it to come up. So favorites, there's nothing there yet. Frequently used, there isn't anything because we've just started. Um, let's click on accessories. So with accessories, we've got Application Finder, Archive Manager, AVL, MXE, User Manual. Uh, we've got BP, or BPyTop, rather. Bulk Rename. Uh, we've got Cache File Search, uh, Character Map. We've got uh, Conky Toggle, Featherpad. We've got uh, Galculator. Uh, I'm going to go through all of these. Let's see, we've got uh, Midnight Commander. That's nice. Mousepad, MX Updater for updating your MX system. Task Manager, uh, we've got uh, Thunar File Manager. Let's click Thunar File Manager, bring that up. And so here's Thunar. Uh, if I click on Computer, it shows my file system. This is a virtual machine, of course. And uh, one of the things I, I do want to show you, though, I've got Data Pioneer, I've got Documents, Downloads, Music, Pictures, Public all the usual players, templates, videos. But I've got some um, things out on my network attached storage with Open Media Vault. I want to see if I can touch that. So I'm going to click on Browse Network. Sure enough, I've got my cloud uh, EX2 Ultra, which is a 4 terabyte uh, RAID uh, 1 cloud that I have. And uh, I've got Raspberry Pi, where I've got o Open Media Vault running on it. And I've got some SMB CIFS shares out there. So I want to double click on this. And there they are. Config ISO repo, which is my uh, repository of uh, ISO files that I've downloaded and preserved. So if I double click on that, uh, it's anonymous, I believe. So I can just connect to it. No, it's not. So it's, it requires a user account. And so. Um, Actually, it is not. I um, don't know why it's not coming up. Let me do a Linux store. And let me do a registered user. I know that's a registered user, not anonymous. And let me put in the password. And then click Connect. And sure enough, there we are. So here are all my folders uh, for the Linux store. What I'm utilizing the Linux store for is I'm replicating a lot of my major folders on my desktop on other systems so if documents downloads um, you know uh, my project folder uh, pi scripts for for python and that kind of stuff and so uh, it's showing up here in my linux store all right and so if i uh, click on browse again and double click here and do a uh, click on the uh, NAS one terabyte green and click on the registered user put in the password should bring up my one terabyte Western Digital Black uh, hard drive which is a spinning hard drive in a dual bay enclosure and so I've got documents and other things that I've placed on that drive so I can touch them here in uh, AV Linux MX21 edition. It's great. So let me go ahead and close Thunar. I like Thunar. I do like other file managers, PCMan FM, 
is another one, and uh, Nemo, I like Nemo, but Thunar is pretty good as well. So let me go ahead and close this. I like the fact that it saw my uh, uh, network attached storage information out there, so I was able to grab that. Let's get back in here, and uh, we were in accessories, and I believe we were done with that. Uh, Thunar file manager, and then XBurn, uh, XF burn rather. Let's go look at development. We've got the icon browser. Uh, for graphics, we have the uh, GIMP package, GPIC, Inkscape, which is nice, and uh, even has Restretto image viewer. I could install and will install on uh, if I put this on bare metal uh, and keep it, which I pretty much am sure I'm going to do because I love the theming here of this. I like the, the, the dark gray and the orange. It's like the Ubuntu orange. I like that. Um, and so I'm going to put Krita in here as well as another one of my graphics packages. For internet, we have FileZilla, Firefox, web browser. Let's click on Firefox and bring that up and uh, take a look at that, see what version we're running. Let's bring that up to full screen and uh, let's close this out. Let's go up here to the hamburger menu, click on help and about Firefox and we are running uh, Firefox uh, version 99.01.0.1 64-bit which is I'm pretty much the latest version. Uh, now Debian Linux is, is known for keeping old versions of applications around but the AV Linux is a kind of a more of a and MX is more of a rolling release type Linux distro which means that it is able to tap into the later editions of things and applications and uh, this is MX Linux da dash 1.0 so that's why we've got the latest edition here of Firefox alright so let's go ahead and close that close out the browser one of the things I will do right away is put Brave web browser on my system because I love the Brave web browser. It's a Chrome-based web browser. I'll keep Firefox, but I'll use uh, Brave uh, as my daily driver web browser. For multimedia, we've got the Also Mixer, we've got Ardor, Asunder, we've got Audacity, which I love. Uh, looks like we've got Handbrake, which I use quite often to transcode files. We've got the Harrison Mixbus uh, 32C, which is nice. We've got Helm and Hydrogen uh, for I do a lot of video creation and so uh, I use Kden Live as well and uh, let's see what else we have here. We have Pulse Audio Volume Control uh, I'm actually uh, videoing this uh, particular video or recording it rather using uh, Simple Screen Recorder in Farron OS and so that uses uh, Pulse. VLC Media Player uh, is available as well and uh, Yoshimi. Alright so for MX Tools we've got the Brightness uh, System Tray, got the Troot Rescue Scan, Disk Manager Format USB so it's got its own uh, formatter which MX Linux has, uh, Live USB Kernel Updater, MX Boot Options, MX Boot Repair, uh, MX Cleanup, Codex Installer, the Conky, which is this thing over here, MX Date and Time, MX uh, Fix GPG Keys, Live USB Maker, uh, Package Installer, uh, which is nice. We have the Repo Manager, which is extremely nice. The MX Snapshot, MX Tools, which is if, if you've never used MX Tools, you're in for a treat. All right, I won't get into showing you that uh, right now, uh, but uh, when you do install AV Linux MX Edition, check out the MX Tools and you'll thank me for that. Buy me a cup of coffee. MX Squeak is another one of those good things to have available. If you've got the NVIDIA driver, uh, I mean the NVIDIA uh, uh, video card, you'll want to use the NVIDIA driver installer to get the latest driver for that particular NVIDIA uh, video card. All right, system keyboard and system locales. For Office, it comes with uh, QPDF View, 
uh, I'll, I would install Office uh, LibreOffice on here. Other people might put only Office, and I believe only Office is available here as well. For other, we've got uh, browse the C drive for Wine users. If you want to bring your Windows experience in, you can also install and configure Wine using this tool. And then uh, you can uninstall Wine software using this tool here. For settings, we've got a whole plethora of things about me, uh, accessibility. We've got an ad blocker appearance, uh, A R A N D R, uh, or A Randar. Uh, and then we've got AVL MXE advanced package settings, uh, quick setup. We've got system ed editor. Uh, utilities. We've got Wine staging setup, Bluetooth adapter, manager, uh, default applications. We have the display, firewall configuration. We have um, MX tools as we said earlier. And we've got the power manager which you'll need to get into right away. Synaptic package manager which I highly recommend. So if I open up Synaptic package manager, let me go ahead and put in the password and authenticate and I love the way this thing is themed out alright so here's the package manager if I wanted to install something here I can click on search and let's say I wanted to install uh, let's go ahead and install Krita okay put in Krita do a search here and it should bring up Krita it does and so let's go ahead and select Krita mark it for installation Let's mark it here and let's go ahead and apply the changes. And it's telling us that the following changes are going to be made. Here's a summary of those changes that are going to be made. And so let's click apply and install. And this is how just how easy it is using the Synaptic Package Manager in AV Linux MX Edition. Um, I have put this uh, distro, by the way, on my Acer Aspire laptop which is a Core i7 laptop uh, with 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, it absolutely loves it. Uh, so it found all my hardware with no issues. And so this is definitely a, uh, a keeper uh, OS. And it probably will become my daily driver out on the desktop. I wanted to kick the tires on it a little bit, though, on the laptop just to make sure that there are no issues that I haven't discovered out of the box and so far I have not discovered any issues out of the box with AV uh, Linux MX Edition. Let's go ahead and close this and uh, when it's closed then we can go ahead and close Synaptic Package Manager and let's come back out here. So I think we're done with this uh, for the application side accessories, development, graphics, internet, multimedia for MX Tools, Office and other Settings, we did not look at. Yeah, we did look at that. And system. System, we did not look at. Uh, but a lot of that's repeated in there, so I'm not going to get into that any further. So let's take a look at the actual dock itself. We've got Firefox sitting out here. We've got the file manager that we can open. We've got MX package installer, so we can install our packages directly from the package installer rather than going into the Synaptic package manager. Now, I'm a big proponent of snap packs and flat packs and uh, app images and so I think that's the future of Linux those three right there and so pretty soon uh, regular installs of packages in Linux is going to go away in my opinion it's going to be snap packages app images and flat packs alright so terminal emulator is here we've got the uh, volume control here here is the updater. No updates available. Here is your logout tool uh, for logging out, powering off, and rebooting. And of course, here's the terminal. And then last but not least, we've got the conky over here. And don't forget, we can right click and select other things here without having to go down to the dock. Let's take a look at wallpaper while we're in here. And so let's go up to wallpaper and just see what else is available. Uh, see how much they have available for us to look at. Quite a few uh, wallpapers to select from. Uh, again, though, as I say, I like the die-hard consciousness 
4K wallpaper, which is this is a uh, AV uh, Linux uh, MX edition, is uh, based in consciousness here as the theme. Uh, so we've got uh, other things here to take a look at, which we've got quite a selection. Got the Earth map, um, different, even another version of it. Um, got Green Valley, we've got all kinds of stuff here. So to your heart's content, and then of course you can bring other ones in if you want to. Solar System, you know, Rocky Shore, um, you know, so there's quite a bit to select here. So let me go ahead and close this out. And, uh, and just say that, in summary, uh, AV Linux MX Edition is a keeper in my book. Very responsive, as you saw in a VM. I like the wallpaper. I like what they're doing here with the theming. Uh, as I said, the dark gray theme. It's almost a blue-gray with the orange uh, Ubuntu-style color uh, of theming is wonderful. I wouldn't change it at all. I'm not sure I'm too keen on the... Uh, the mouse pointer, but I get used to it. Uh, it does turn into a hand when you're on the browser, so that's okay. But anyway, take a look at AV Linux MX Edition when you get a chance. Download it from the website that I showed you. I'll put the links down below the video and uh, give it a spin for yourself. I think you'll enjoy using it. It is going to become my daily driver, I believe, for my desktop. And so this has been Data Pioneer. If you like my video, go ahead and click that uh, uh, up button down below there in the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel while you're here. And so this is Data Pioneer. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the system setup and product review for AV Linux MX Edition. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.